everyone, I'm Will Terrell and welcome to this video. This is going to be a how-to video on how to draw from reference. Uh, or more specifically, how do you draw from your imagination versus drawing what you see? This is one of the questions I get asked the most from people. Uh, and it usually comes from artists that are really good at drawing what they see, but they're frustrated that they can't draw from their imagination. So I'm going to demonstrate how we do that by drawing a shark. <laughs> when it's time for me to design a character, I collect as much reference as I can. So in this case, I'm going to be drawing, designing a character of a shark. And so I go on YouTube, or I go on Google, and I do image search for sharks. And I do searches for photos of sharks, uh, pictures of cartoon sharks, Animated sharks, drawing sharks, uh, anything, any search term I can think of that will get me something different. And I collect them all into one place and I basically just copy them. I draw as close as I can get to reference material. Uh, and the reason for that is I'm trying to build up a visual language. The thing is, we're not actually born knowing how to draw a shark or born knowing how to draw anything for that matter. When we try and draw and we've never actually looked at, at reference, then uh, chances are we're just drawing what we think we see, but it's not real. And so you need to build up a visual language based off of reality. So start collecting some reference. Uh, don't go overboard with it. Give yourself a time limit. Uh, I'll spend usually about 15, 20 minutes, uh, maybe a little bit longer, just looking up reference material wherever I can and putting it all into one place. And if you have access to an actual shark, that's even better. <laughs> then the next step is to just fill, fill up several sketchbook pages of sketches and keep it loose, keep it fast. Uh, don't fall in love with the drawings. Don't fall in love with sketching other people's stuff. Uh, just fill up as many pages as you can from drawing these reference materials. You're looking for those things that make a shark look like a shark. What makes it so distinct from every other creature on the planet? Um, you know the way that the eyes are dark and the way they're set in the head, and how the the it has a flat head at the top. Like that always surprised me when I go to sketch a shark is how flat the top of their head is, and uh, how jagged, <laughs> crazy looking those teeth are. Look at that. <laughs> Like the gills, you know, the gills on these sharks, man, that's what, that's one of their most distinctive characteristics. That's why I like uh, sports cars when they put those vents in the sides that kind of look like sharks, shark gills. That's what makes it look so awesome. One thing you'll notice when you start drawing from reference like this is that uh, you'll start to see little details that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise. Like, for me, I completely... I was always leaving out the little tiny fins on their tail. Uh, in the, in, uh, my favorite part is these crinkly lines on the shark's nose. <laughs> and I'd never noticed that before until I started looking at reference material. So you want to do at least 15 to 20 sketches from reference material. Um, more would be a lot better. Basically, you want to get to the point where you, you draw enough from reference that you start to feel like you can do it from memory. And if you want to get extra credit, you can also study the skeletal structure, the muscle structure, all of that before actually sketching from uh, reference. And then you can you can actually go to a zoo or an aquarium or something like that and draw these animals on site and really really push your skills at, of observation uh, to a whole other level. After I've sketched from photo reference for a while, I'll put that away and I'll get out samples of other artists' work, of other cartoonists, comic book artists, illustrators, whatever, or stuff from animated movies, and I'll draw from that as reference. And what I'm looking for is how other people caricatured whatever the subject is that I'm working on. What did they use to exaggerate? Uh, what features did they exaggerate? What did they decide was the defining characteristic of a pig or a a pigeon or a shark or whatever animal it is that I'm drawing and I'll try and capture that characteristic and put it in, into the sketch. Now it's very important when you're drawing from other people's work that you don't claim it as your own. It's very easy to fall in love with copying other people's work because you get a professional looking result but it doesn't belong to you. 
and that could lead to a lot of frustration as well as other potential problems, so it's best just to avoid it altogether. But reproducing other people's work is a really good way of learning. Like this guy's work that I'm uh, reproducing here, his name's S.T. Lewis, and he is one of my favorite cartoonists. You've got to check out more of his stuff. Uh, everything he does is just like candy. It's amazing. Here's his website link for some more. He has this wonderful obsession with drawing sharks. <laughs> Now it's time to put it together. Let's have some fun. So basically we're gonna put away all of our reference material, all of our previous sketches, and we're just gonna draw what we just drew from memory. Welcome back. <laughs> I just really love drawing sharks. <laughs> so when you do your own version of these character designs after practicing for a while from drawing from photos and drawing from reference sketches, uh, you'll find that you're, you're drawing in your own style. Sure, it might not be a super fancy style, but if, if you're doing it right, your new sketch won't look too much like the reference material that you used. Uh, you should be able to give your own twist, your own personality, and uh, as long as you're not cheating and going back to look at the old sketches or the reference material, it should be a different looking thing. And that's the point. You don't want to copy somebody else's work. You want to find your own voice, and this is how you do it. Just remember, our goal is that we're building up a visual language based off of reality, based off of drawing from real life, from photos. We're learning how and a shark's eye actually looks, how the mouth actually actually looks, and how the fins actually look, and how it moves in water. These are things that you have to practice drawing from reference, but then you put the drawings, you put the reference away, and you turn it into a language that you can speak with your own work. And this is how you start to bridge the gap between drawing what you see and drawing from your imagination. And on the other side, there's a lot of artists out there like myself where I started off I only drew from my imagination and my drawings look terrible and it's because I never took the time to draw from reference or to draw from real life and so there's something that's always a little bit off about your drawings because uh, anybody can look at it and say oh, that doesn't look like real life and I used to try and justify it by saying well it's my way of drawing a shark but <laughs> if it looks weird it looks weird 
you know, it's one thing to find your own style, but um, it really helps if it's based on something in reality and you understand the rules of how things actually work and then you break those rules. The best part about this is that it's fun. Like, you're just sketching. <laughs> and then what, once you put away the reference, you were just... It's like breathing. You're exhaling the air that is already in your lungs. It's not a struggle anymore. <laughs> You'll also find that your drawings have a lot more energy to them. Because when you're busy copying somebody else's drawing of a character that you like... Uh, you're too busy trying to get the lines in the right place, and you're trying to, you know, fiddle with it so it looks exactly the same, and it looks stiff and just wonky. But when you draw it from memory, you know, once all that stuff is internalized and you're drawing it from memory, it's looser, and it's more energetic, and it's usually more fun. It's the same way that you learned how to write the letters of the alphabet, you know, it when you first started off, you didn't know what the letters were actually supposed to look like. And then when you actually started doing them, your handwriting looked terrible. And you would do your best to copy other people's stuff, but it, it just was stiff or sloppy or, you know, it just didn't work. But the more you practiced developing that language, the more versatile you get with writing. Uh, you may still have terrible handwriting, but it's at least usually legible enough for other people to understand it. And you can work on it. You can work on the calligraphy, just like you can work on how you draw eyes. You can work on how you draw a mouth. You know, all these things can be developed by practicing. And at the same time, if you, uh, if all you ever do is copy uh, or just draw from reference materials, you're going to feel frustrated over time because you're not actually using it to communicate the thoughts that are in your head. And that's, it's basically along the lines of you, you are still just copying the letters of the alphabet. You're still just reproducing other people's words. And that's not what art is meant to do. It's supposed to be a language for you to communicate your own thoughts. And apparently in my case, the thoughts I choose to communicate are that I really like to draw fat sharks. <laughs> Okay, something else you can do once you've internalized drawing from reference, you can draw just random shapes and uh, add on the features that you drew f from the reference materials. The way the eyes are, the flat head of the shark, the nose, the wrinkles in the lines of the nose. <laughs> and at this point it becomes more about designing the character, which is what you want. You want to have more control over what it is that you're doing. So. You start using shapes and constructing and streamlining and so on and so forth and choosing how you want to exaggerate. And at this point, it's more uh, playful, like you're playing with your drawing. And as long as you keep going back to reference and then putting the reference away and drawing from memory and you, you do this over and over and over and staying balanced with your development, you'll find your all of your drawings becoming stronger and your enjoyment of drawing will become better and that's what it's supposed to be about so i hope this video was helpful and if you liked it please uh, subscribe or and share the video with some people that you think might enjoy it and uh, thank you so much for watching keep smiling <laughs>